Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new here. Today I have a very, very, very exciting video. As many of you may know, I have been searching for a friend for my rabbit Luna for about five months now and today I am actually going to my local SPCA to potentially meet her new friend. I'm so excited. Um, I have tried one bunny before with her, my foster bunny, Leo. Um, that did not work out and he has since gone back to the rescue, but I saw another rabbit that is at my local SPCA. He is seven years old and he is actually blind in one eye. Um, so I am actually about to leave for my SPCA in about 30 minutes and I'm super excited because they actually do bunny dates. So the last rescue I tried, um, they did not do bunny dates, but my SPCA, I can take Luna to the SPCA. They will set up a pen. I can put her and their rabbit in the pen and kind of see how they interact, see how they like each other and get like a a little sample date before I commit to bringing him home. They also do have a seven day trial period that I can do where I bring him home for seven days, try it out, see how it goes, um, sort of go from there as to whether I wanna keep him or bring him back depending on how their bond goes. So I'm super excited. Um, I did not realize my SPCA offered dates like this um, or I would have gone a lot sooner. So I'm excited, this was kind of, a little bit impromptu, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I don't know if you guys remember in my last video, I said I was going to wait um, about two more months until I moved to get Luna a friend, but he's just been on my mind at the rescue. So I am really hoping this is like a good gut feeling meant to be kind of thing and it's going to work out. And if it's not him, they said they do have other rabbits uh, there at the SPCA right now that they can date her with and sort of see if she likes any of the ones they have available right now. So that's a great opportunity for me. I did not realize they do that. So I'm super excited, um, cannot wait. So we're leaving in, like I said, 30 minutes. I'm gonna put Luna in a carrier, take her there. It's probably like a 30, 40 minute drive, not too bad. And then I will try and record footage there for you, but I also probably will be very, very focused on like observing their behavior during the date. And I'm sure like the volunteers will be in the room with me too. So it would be kind of weird to film. So I might get footage, might not, but I'm so excited. Um, this was very impromptu. I just decided like this morning that I was going to do this. Um, but I've been looking at him for like a week now and just feeling like he might be the one. So yeah, time to grab Luna, head on over to the rescue and yeah, I hope it works out. So I just got home from the rescue. Um, ignore all the mess behind me. We are in my bedroom right now and I'm about to start bonding at home. So from the few clips, I don't know if you guys could tell, um, it went decently well at the rescue. The bunny I'm taking home is not the one I originally went there for. I originally went there for um, the seven-year-old rabbit they had and I ended up taking home a one-year-old lot they had. Um, the seven-year-old, he was really grumpy. He was boxing even at people, whatever. And the volunteers that were like, he might not be the best choice. So we tried one of the younger lots they had there and it went over great. Luna had absolutely no issues with him. She, he loved Humper and she just did not care. So hopefully I'm, that same pattern will continue now that we're home and she's in a little bit more of a familiar environment. So I have a pen set up behind me. Um, I have just fully cleaned this pen and also fresh fleece and puppy pads and stuff on the ground to protect my carpet. And I'm about to, they're still in their carriers right now. They are in separate carriers. I drove them home in two different carriers and I'm about to take those carriers and I'm just literally gonna walk around the house carrying them in my hands, each like one in each hand to sort of um, 
disrupt them from any like calmness if that makes sense they may have gotten sense coming back home specifically luna i want to make sure luna's a little bit more on edge when she goes in the pen and not like thinking this is her home or being territorial i hope that makes sense i'm not trying to scare them or anything this is like a calmer version of the car ride method i'm not going in the car i'm not putting them together i'm just going to carry their separate carriers around my house um the pen behind me is about eight square feet a um, little bit bigger than the last bonding I tried. I think this is going to be better. So let's go ahead and grab them and get to it. Um, I'm very excited. Hopefully it continues well at home. Uh, I'm doing a seven day trial period with him. So I have seven days to sort of attempt the bond, feel it out, see if I think it's going to be a good match and keep him. So I decided to go ahead and get right to it tonight. So wasting no time. So let's go ahead and put them in here. All right, it is now time for a bonding recap. And this is truly going to be like one of the shortest bonding recaps I have ever done because I truly would consider them pretty much a love at first sight bond. Um, as you can see, he is all over her. He was very hump happy, which wasn't the worst as Luna really did not mind that he kept humping her. But this was within the first like 15 minutes of putting them in the pen and... There he is just humping away and Luna does not care. She's literally eating while it's happening. Um, I did allow him to hump her a decent bit, but I just didn't want it to continue on so much that it really started to bother her. You can see here he's grooming himself comfortably right beside her. This interaction Luna does kind of correct him here with a nip, but you can see he shoves his head down. He apologizes, says he's not a threat, and then they both just move on. Um... He's humping her some more. I did not let him face hump. I would take him off as soon as he started to face hump like that there because I did not want him. I did not want Luna to be able to bite his private parts. So he's just, he's so persistent about the humping. So I'm so lucky that Luna really just was not uh, that upset about it. And then here's a nice time lapse of them literally just vibing. He's cleaning himself. She's just laying there. This was, I want to say, about 30 minutes into the bond. So already we're having very, very relaxed bonding behavior. So super big plus here. I'm pretty sure this is just a clip of him snuggling up close to her, uh, relaxing together. And you can see he's super close and she still is not reacting in any sort of negative way. She's completely comfortable being that close to him and here's another clip of him um humping her some more I don't know how she put up with this so much I would have been so annoyed but he is just so persistent I think he was just so excited to be with another rabbit and have a friend and he didn't mean any harm at all by this he was just overexcited so you know if she didn't care then I let it go on for a bit because he just didn't mean any harm he was just so excited um she was eating pillows with him they ate veggies together um, and then here they're just both grooming themselves, very relaxed, you know, no issues at all. Here they're almost cuddling. I would almost consider that a cuddle. And then Luna flopped out all nice and happy. And then he climbed all over her and she just laid there. It was the funniest thing. Um, but overall, they just had a really great bond. All right, guys. So it is actually the next morning. Um, they have been doing really, really well. I woke up in the middle of the night and they were usually cuddling when I woke up. They have been cuddling all morning, laying up next to each other. Um, they have still been doing humping. She has started to hump him back, but they ne neither of them seems to mind too much when the other humps. They're just kind of going back and forth humping, but it never turns into anything more. So I'm actually going to give them a little bit more space. Um, he is very active. He's been trying to do kind of small zoomies in this pen, but there's not really a lot of space for him. And I just don't want him to get like, get pent up and then use all, all his energy to take that out on Luna. But she's been laying just like this and he'll lay beside her and they'll cuddle. And it's just really cute. They've been doing amazing and I'm so happy that they've been doing well. So I'm gonna expand the pen right here to be a full um, 16 square feet. If it doesn't go well, then I will take it back to the size. But I think they've been doing well enough that they are ready for the expansion. And as you guys may have been able to tell, he is a little bit underweight. So he was actually um, surrendered to a vet's office because they, his owners took him in and he needed his teeth trimmed and they didn't want to pay for that. So they literally just surrendered him to the vet's office. And that's how he wound up at the SPCA. So they said when he came in, he was even skinnier, which is really hard to believe because you guys can see how thin 
um, his neck is right here. So we're gonna be working to get some weight on him. I do have some critical care in here, but um, honestly, I think Luna has been eating most of it. So I might try to syringe feed him later. He has like a great te temperament and he has a lot of energy, but you can just see like, specifically on his neck, but you can see how thin he is. Um, obviously he's a smaller bunny compared to Luna, but even then, like his neck is really thin and he weighs like almost nothing when I pick him up. So we're gonna be working to get some weight on him. So that's really good. But just in case you guys were concerned, cause you can kind of tell, that's just because his old owners um, treated him not well and his teeth got overgrown and he couldn't eat and they probably fed him a poor diet too. But his teeth have since been trimmed and he's got his appetite back. He just needs some time to gain some weight. So let's go ahead and expand the pen and see how they do. Alright guys, so it is now the evening and I do have a bit of an update for you all. So like I mentioned earlier, um, the SPCA had originally told me that he had overgrown teeth when he came there and they were shaved down by the vet earlier this month. Um, however, I have been noticing he doesn't seem to be eating as much hay as Luna or really you know, consuming as many veggies or pellets. So I did take a look at his teeth today and they're not looking very great. Um, I'll put a photo on the screen. Uh, they're definitely looking a little bit overgrown, misaligned, and just overall not how they should be looking if they were just shaved down earlier this month. So um, he's actually eating some right now, but I have been giving him more critical care since that's probably pretty much all he can eat. I don't really know what he was living off of when he was at the SPCA, if they weren't giving him any sort of liquid type food, considering that his teeth are like horribly misshapen, misaligned, overgrown, like it's just not correct. And I don't know how they would have grown back to that length within the past few weeks since the last time that they were shaved down. Basically, I will be giving my SPCA a call tomorrow um, since I am doing a seven day trial period. He is still technically the like property of the SPCA. So I'm hoping that I can give them a call and that I can take him to the vet and have that vet trip like fully refunded and paid for basically. Um, if he needs routine teeth trimming, that is fine with me. I'm willing to deal with that, pay for that, whatever. Um, but if they weren't ever trimmed in the first place and like things weren't sorted before I got him, that's just not correct. So I will be giving both my vet and the SPCA a call tomorrow. Um, you can see him right there, trying to get everything set up. Um, Luna is eating his critical care right now. Luna, that is not for you. But overall, they have been doing really, really good. Here you go, buddy. Have some. They were getting a little bit more excited kind of towards dinner time tonight, doing a little bit more circling behaviors like that. But again, nothing that aggressive. So I'm mostly now concerned about the fact that um, his teeth are not as healthy as they kind of made it out to be. So hopefully it was just like a misunderstanding with the vet record that I can get him in tomorrow, get them shaved down, officially adopt him and everything will be like 
completely fine and smooth. Um, so I will give you all an update tomorrow when I call the SPCA and kind of hear about that. Um, totally not what I was expecting. Like, of course, the bond goes perfect, but then like something else is not perfect. So um, more updates to come tomorrow, but I'm glad their bond is working out and I just hope that we can sort out any teeth issues tomorrow. All right, everyone. So it is now the next morning and I have not been able to get in contact with my SPCA. Um, I have left them voicemails on both their adoption line and like the adoption specialist, like the head of the adoption program, basically. I left them both voicemails. Um, no matter how many times I call, I just get voicemail. So <laughs> There's nothing I can do about that. Um, I called my vet, which is also the same vet the SPCA uses. And since he is still, you know, the property of the SPCA, if I want them to pay for the vet visit, I cannot schedule and go to it without their consent. So right now he is still eating critical care. He is still active. Um, he's not in GI stasis. Obviously, if he were to go into GI stasis or if something serious were to happen, I would just take him regardless of whether I could get approval or not because, you know, a serious situation, an emergency calls for that. But right now I am just waiting for my SPCA to get in contact with me. But I'm actually going to go ahead and move up to the next step of the bonding process. I'm going to be adding a litter box into their pen. Um, I actually just saw Luna grooming him like two minutes ago. It was the cutest thing ever. She was just licking his little forehead. Um, so I think they're ready for the next step. So I'm gonna clean up their pen a little bit, put down fresh fleece, add in a litter box. I just am currently sanitizing the litter box. So we're gonna do that while I wait for the call from the SPCA and hopefully they call me back today or tomorrow. Um, I can get him in Tuesday for a teeth trim, making me really anxious, um, just like constantly waiting for the SPCA to get in touch with me. The fact that like I can't just like make the decision, the appointment myself, and I have to wait for their approval, but I also can't get in contact with them. So that's lovely, but um, let's like upgrade their pen and that will give me some distraction from waiting for the call. So let's do that. All right, guys, great news. Um, a, they're doing great with the litter box. I already saw him use it, no like territorial issues. So they're just cruising right along in the bonding process. And B, the SPCA did call me back um, and they said they are reaching out to their like head adoption specialist and will be, you know, uh, making that appointment and hopefully getting back to me within the next day or two by the end of the weekend, essentially. Um, so that is good. Obviously I wanna get him in as soon as possible, but he is still eating, he is still active, so I'm not too worried. But they said we will get his appointment squared away, get him taken care of, and then I can, after that's taken care of, I will officially adopt him. So I just wanna get him seen by the vet while he is still under you know, their contract so they can pay for that. And then I will officially adopt him. So yeah, very exciting stuff. Um, I will give you guys updates as I continue to do the bonding, but obviously this bonding is going absolutely phenomenal. I'm so excited. Um, they just clearly really, really lo love each other. So I feel like despite the teeth issues, I did still get lucky with him and how well they're getting along. Hey everyone. So it is actually now a few days later. It is currently Monday evening or like Monday midnight, I guess. It's like midnight on Monday. But I wanted to give you guys a few updates about how the bunnies are doing. So first of all, very exciting news. We have chosen a name for the new bunny. We are going to be calling him Coda. Um, one of my friends over on Instagram recommended it. And I also like the name because it reminded me of one of the characters in Brother Bear. I'll put a photo of him on the screen, but he was like the young bear cub in the movie Brother Bear. And I watched that movie when I was a kid and I absolutely loved it. And I feel like 
he just has the same kind of energy and personality as Coda in the movie. And I just like the way the name sounds. So he's going to be called Coda. I'm very excited. I think it fits him super, super well. But um, the other news, obviously, about his teeth and the SPCA and all of that. So I did get a call back this morning um, from my think someone a little bit higher up at the SPCA from like the level of conversation we had about his health basically. And they're going to be calling um, the vet tomorrow morning to get him an appointment schedule. Um, today is Memorial Day. So that has been a huge reason or at least a part of the reason why it's been so hard to schedule this appointment because obviously I just let them know of this issue on Saturday and it's Memorial Day weekend. So it's been really hard to coordinate all of that. I will be talking more in depth later in this video about like my overall thoughts on the SPCA and like how the situation has been handled. Obviously, you know, any rescue that's helping animals is great and I appreciate that. But the fact is Coda is just not in the right sort of condition to be sent off to an adoption home or a potential adoption home. Um, his health and his condition is just not appropriate to put in the hands of an adopter. It's very lucky that I was able to catch what was going on with his teeth, that I had critical care on hand, and that I knew how to handle the situation. You know, lots of first-time bunny owners out there um, would not have known what to do, I would say. And I think that could have gone a lot worse for him if he was adopted by someone with um, less knowledge of, like, bunny health issues and like what to do in those kinds of situations. So I'm really glad that he's with me and I'm really glad that the SPCA is, you know, making the appointment and we're getting him seen by a vet this week. I will say, I think he's basically living off the critical care. I've been feeding him. Um, I give him a bowl every three to four hours. Um, and that bowl has like one scoop of the powder in it and then just a bunch of l water to make it liquid and he just licks it up. And I do that every four hours. So I'll we'll be sorted at the vet appointment, hopefully tomorrow or Wednesday. I'm hoping to schedule the appointment for because the critical care is a lot. And obviously he's also underweight and malnourished and to get weight on him, I really need him to be able to eat more than liquid cr critical care. So yeah, that's the update on Coda. Um, hopefully I will have a positive update for you all tomorrow. Maybe we'll be going to the vet. I'm really hoping so. Um, and like I said, I'll give my whole thoughts on the situation with the SPCA at the end of the video. I just feel like I need to go a little bit more in depth with it. So we'll do that later. But yeah, hopefully um, more good news tomorrow. Oh, also I added a hide in their pen. So they have a single cardboard house in there right now. It has multiple entrances and it was new. I like just bought it, so no sense on it. And it hasn't really caused any issues at all. They've been completely fine. The most I see is maybe some circling and Luna might nip his butt a little bit, but that's pretty tame stuff. So I'm very happy with the bond. I just want to get his health in check. So I will check back in with you all as soon as I hear back from the SPCA. Hello everyone. It is now Wednesday, uh, May 31st, and I have another update. Um, the SPCA did call me back yesterday. Um, great news that I were finally able to get me a guaranteed appointment. Bad news is it's not till Friday, so a few more days before he can go. The SPCA will be paying for his teeth trimming, but they said um, they don't, if I want to like blood work or x-rays of his mouth, etc. They are not going to be paying for those things. That's something I will have to pay for. So glad we have the appointment. Um, he is doing well. He is eating so much critical care. Um, I feel like he ate 50, 50 grams of powder yesterday because I opened a new bag and it's like almost all the way gone. And I think I did see him eat a little bit of hay. It was hard to tell. He was sitting in the litter box and his mouth was like moving like he was chewing. He could have just been grinding his teeth from like pain or something, but it kind of looked like he was chewing. So I'm hoping that that is the case and he's able to eat at least a little bit of hay right now. Um, but let's check on them. They're doing so well. I want to move them into the living room either today or tomorrow. Um, because as you can see, we're still in my terribly messy bedroom. Um, oh, Coda, are you back there? I don't know where he went. I think he went in his box, but I do want to get them into the, into the living room. But that means like cleaning, cleaning, cleaning out there. I have to like basically 
coat my entire room in um, vinegar and water solution to get rid of any of Luna's smell. So that will be a lot of work, but let's check on them, see how they're doing. Um, either way, their pen does need like a little clean today. The critical care gets all over the place and it gets really messy really fast. But let's see how he's doing. There's nothing in there. You already ate it all. Hey, buddy. We'll get you more soon. And he is pretty dirty too right now just from all the critical care he does a pretty good job of cleaning himself um it's just his ears get soaked so and he's also been great with the litter box so he goes in that exact corner all right everyone so i have cleaned my living room and it's time for them to move out here. Um, this is where their pen is going to be. I am going to make it uh, double the size of what they have now. I normally wouldn't do that big of an upgrade for a bonding, but they've been doing really well. So I just wanna try it out, see how it goes. So it's gonna be um, this, and then I'm gonna add the pen they currently have right here. It'll be about 32 square feet, I wanna say. So that is all set up. These grids are clean and I have scrubbed like every inch of my living room. So I sprayed my white vinegar and water mixture all over the floor, all over the walls, the furniture. I like sprayed the bottom of this chair. I scrubbed these walls. I scrubbed the floor. And then I also have a brand new rug here. So this was a rug our neighbors gave us when they moved out. So I got rid of the old rug, uh, put it into storage, and then put down a fresh rug so there's no scents. Um, and then spray the couch down, cleaned that area over there. So everything is nice and clean. Probably not really going to free roam them. I'm not really sure. I'm kind of gonna move the pen out here and then just kind of like herd them out of the bedroom and into this area. Basically see how they do, et cetera. If they're doing fine, I'll let them roam, roam around a little bit supervised. Um, they have been bonded for a week tomorrow. So they've been doing pretty good and I think a little bit of free roaming could help them get some of that pent up energy out. So we'll see how it goes. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and get them, get their pen and move them in here. really good news I have discovered that he is capable of eating pellets um I've been giving him some all day long since I saw him eat them this morning this wasn't something I saw him do the past few days so maybe it's something that he realized he could do or he watched Luna eat a bunch of pellets and you know gave it a shot and realized he could actually consume them but either way I'm very grateful so I've been giving pellets and critical care and thankfully he has his vet appointment tomorrow morning. And so overall, I just feel like he's doing at least a little bit better. The eating pellets and a small amount of hay, obviously super good sign. He also feels a lot softer, like his fur when I first got him felt like very separated and almost like 
sticky. I don't know how to describe it, but it just didn't, it wasn't smooth. It wasn't soft. It just felt kind of rougher than bunny fur like normally feels, but he feels very soft now, very smooth. And he does look like he's put on at least a little bit of weight in the past week. So all very good improvements. Um, they are both been very active. I've been doing free roam time when I'm in the living room to watch them. And they've been running around doing zoomies binkies. Luna did a bunch of binkies when I let them out this morning. It was so cute. Um, I am doing their pen, the two by two, 16 square foot size at night, just to make sure they still like are forced to be close to each other and, you know, remain bonded and don't get territorial over certain areas. So only free roam when I'm home and watching them and in the pen at night. And that's been working great so far. Luna's still doing some chasing and some nipping, but overall, that's pretty normal and there's really nothing to be concerned about except Coda's health at this point. So a vet appointment early tomorrow, 10 a.m. Um, I am anticipating it greatly and I am really hoping this is something that can be solved quickly. So for now, Coda is doing well. He's making improvements and the last thing is just to get him in to the vet and get his teeth fixed and hopefully then we were on the way to recovery for him. So I will keep you guys updated tomorrow. All right, guys, so I am back from the vet and Coda is here behind me. He's looking so cute. Hey, buddy. And his teeth have been shaved. So he is capable of consuming food once again. Um, well, I guess he was consuming a little bit of pellets, but like actually being able to eat on his own and his teeth aren't growing out of his mouth. So huge moment of celebration there um, for his teeth being short again. Uh, now on to the bad news. So his teeth are not, um, they're overgrown basically because of his genetics and the way that he was born and likely the way that he was like bred as well. I obviously cannot guarantee this, but my personal guess would be that he came from a backyard breeder. Uh, most lop rabbits are going to come from backyard breeders and just based on the conditions of his previous home and their like lack, he's right here, you can't see him, but he's, he's right here. Their like lack of knowledge, um, I would kind of, guess that he came from a backyard breeder. So again, can't really guarantee that, but it just feels like that's just when I got the camera on you. So it just kind of feels like that's probably what happened. So his teeth, the way they grow, his front incisors grow, his top teeth grow inward and his bottom teeth grow outward. So his teeth, his front incisors don't actually touch each other. So at no point do they touch, meaning they don't grind down on their own. Um, and basically he hates the hardwood. So I made him a little bridge with these pants, but um, basically he will never be able to grind down his teeth on his own. So that leaves me with two options. Option A is to keep getting his teeth trimmed like we did today, and I would just do that pro probably at least once a month, if not every three weeks, basically as needed. Um, based on the time of his last appointment, I would say probably three weeks time, if not even shorter, um, to be completely honest. So that is very, very frequent. Um, but luckily it is about $50 each time that I shave them down, which could be worse. $50 is not the worst amount. That could definitely be worse. So that's option one. Option two is to remove his front incisors. So we can just fully remove um, his front teeth here. And then he still has his back teeth and he basically just sucks up the hay with his lips and then he would eat it with his back teeth there. And um, that surgery estimation was about $1,100. So it's definitely high, but it could have been higher. So I think it's definitely doable. And I do think long, <laughs> he 
he can't walk on the hardwood at all. It's so funny. Um, <laughs> I definitely think long term the goal would be to remove his teeth just because I did the math. And if he gets one teeth trim every three weeks for a year, that will cost me around $900 give or take, where the surgery to remove the teeth cost me 1100 and then he will never need teeth maintenance again because he literally will not have front incisors. So long-term, definitely makes sense to remove the teeth, um, but that's not a surgery I'm going to rush into for now. We will shave them. We will work on getting some weight on him as well, get making sure he's healthy and, you know, could undergo and handle that kind of surgery. So for now, we'll be shaving them down as needed. Um, but he's doing well. Um, I also ran blood work, fecal for him. Um, I haven't gotten those results back. The vet should be calling me tomorrow or this weekend, etc. with the results from that. Hopefully his weight loss and his him being skinny is just a result of the teeth issue and there's not another underlying condition. Blood work should tell us that, but, um, yeah, I'm going to contact the SPCA and um, request to officially adopt him. So I do have to do that and then he will officially be mine. But I did pay for the blood work and the fecal today at the vet. And then the SPCA is taking care of his exam and his teeth trimming, which it was about like a 50-50 split money-wise, which isn't the worst. Um, I definitely just think like the blood work was something I wanted to do and I doubt that's something that's like typical care for the SPCA. So I understand partially on that, but I do want to just give a brief final opinion about this whole situation uh, before I end this video. All right. So as far as the situation with the SPCA goes, I do want to just say a few final notes. Um, first of all, A, I absolutely love shelters and rescues. Obviously, you know, I'm a huge advocate and supporter of rescuing and, you know, that adoption and all of that. And I really do appreciate that there are more SPCAs, shelters, local county shelters, etc., that are expanding beyond cats and dogs and are expanding into small mammals, rabbits, exotics, stuff like that. Um, so there don't just only have to be exotic specific rescues and all of the surrenders aren't going solely there. And there's also other shelters and programs that are helping. Um, However, if a rescue is going to take in rabbits, exotics, etc., they really should know to look for these kinds of things. And it could have been a one-off. It could have been an oversight that no one checked up on his teeth after they were trimmed. I will say they did mention to me when I adopted him that he might need teeth trimming in the future. But I just think there should have been a little bit more knowledge there. I mean, the vet could tell as soon as I took him in today, she could tell the way his teeth were growing that it was, you know, from his genetics and they would never grind down on their own. And, you know, that's something that I think should have been in his file and clearly communicated um, prior to me bringing him home, you know, they just kind of said, you know, oh, you might need teeth trimmings regularly. Like, just call your vet, see how much that could cost. And I was like, oh, okay, like, all right. But they didn't go into the details about how, like, it literally was the fact that his genetics made his teeth not be able to grind down on their own. And they did not check his teeth after his appointment in any sort of regular manner since he came to me with them already overgrown in a state where they needed to be trimmed. Um... I watched him for a day and could tell he wasn't eating normally. I know, you know, shelters are very busy. Volunteers are very busy. They can't just watch him all day like I was able to. But I just think he got, you know, he was an oversight. And I understand like large shelters, large rescues, things like that can happen. But it's just really unfortunate that, you know, to see a shelter expand into exotics and rabbits, but then to just, you know, kind of miss these things and overlook these things. So yeah, I will be contacting the SBCA, officially adopting him, all of that, getting him his teeth trims as needed and eventually that surgery. So not the situation I was expecting when I started this video 
at all. I am super glad that Luna has chosen a friend, that she loves her friend, that they're getting along like super well. They're great, perfect pair. Um, obviously the situation is not ideal. It's not what I had in mind. And you know, he will have health issues that I will have to sort and continue to sort for probably a decent length of time until I get him scheduled for that surgery. So yeah, um, this is in no way, shape, or form meant to be like hate <laughs> towards my SPCA or hate towards shelters. Um, anyone who knows me knows that that is not my intention at all. Uh, but clearly things just did not operate as they should have. And, you know, I hope it was a one-off and a one-time oversight. That's my little ending rant. Um, thank you all so much for watching this video. I will say if you are interested in um, helping me pay for Coda's teeth removal surgery, please check out my Instagram. I have just started doing artwork commissions. So I've just started doing uh, pet portraits and stuff like that where I can draw your pets for a small fee and then all of that money will go towards Coda's teeth removal surgery. So if you wanna help, please do it that way. Um, I feel uncomfortable just receiving donations. So if anyone's feeling like they want to help, please just head over to my Instagram, request a commission, and um, we can do it that way. But thank you all so, so much for watching this video. Luna finally has a friend. He's so sweet. He's amazing. So I can't wait to share him more with you guys. And thank you all so much for watching. I will see you again next time. Bye-bye.